Hello again, it's Connie here from Say It With Simplicity. I hope you're all doing well. I hope it's a little bit warmer where you are. It got really cold here just the last few days and it's a reminder that Christmas is right around the corner. So what I thought I'd do today is bring you a tutorial on how I made this this Christmas stocking vector in Silhouette Studio. And this is something that you could use on your cards or your tags. You could even make this into a little tag all by itself. Now this is something that goes together really quickly and I practiced it quite a bit. And this is what I love about Silhouette Studio so much. I can imagine something and I can bring it to Silhouette Studio and design it just the way I imagined it. So it just really speaks to the power of this program and once you learn a few things you'll be taking off um, in all sorts of directions. This just uses a couple different tools. We'll be working on point editing and we'll be using the modify panel and we'll be done with this project in no time. So Let's get started here with a rectangle. I'm just, sometimes when I'm screen casting, some of my shortcuts don't work as well. So I'm just going to drag out a rectangle here. And I want it to be taller than wide. And it really doesn't matter. You can end up, you can resize this to any dimension that you want. But basically, you want it taller than wide. And so I'm going to double click into this. There's a couple of different ways you can point edit in Silhouette Studio. And one of them is right here across the top. And one of them is with this point editing panel. There's always more than one way to do things in Silhouette Studio. And my preferred way is to use this point editing panel. Now, when we have it open here, you can see that all these different things are grayed out, except for simplify and convert to path, and we don't need either one of those right now. But one of the things that it doesn't show here is that when I go over here to this shape, and I start to get closer to this line, and I hover over, you'll see a little hand, and maybe you won't be able to see it here, but I can see it and then you'll get this little arrow with a um, bar behind it. I'm going to make a point and it, when I hover over that I can make a point on this line. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a point on this line. You can see I already have four points there but I want one more and that's going to be right Oh maybe, I don't know, you can't really divide this into thirds evenly here, but let's go right about there. And so now I have my extra point there, and this line right here is highlighted in red. And this line is the one that I want to bring out for the foot of my sock or my boot or my stocking, whatever you want to call it here. Um, different people call it different things. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, now you can see that these are active and I can use any of these tools right here. And so I'm going to make this one a curve. And it didn't really do a whole lot, but I have two blue control handles here and I can grab the bottom one with um, my cursor and my mouse. And I like to use a mouse. So if you're using Silhouette Studio, I really feel that the best way to work is with um, a scroll wheel mouse. And I'm just going to pull this out until I sort of have a, a toe going on here. And you can see that this side of this handle is getting longer. And we can work on this a little more later, but you can see I've started to develop a toe here on my um, stocking. 
Now I'm going to take this one up here and I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. And you can kind of see that they're both moving a little bit, but that's okay. Now I'm going to grab this point over here. And you can see now that that line is highlighted in red. And now I can do one of two things. I can just drag this up or I can use my keyboard um, arrow, up arrow, and move that point up or use my mouse and drag it up. And you can see that it's starting to look a little bit more like a stocking. Now I want to take this point and it highlights this in red now and I'm going to make this a curve. And it's bumped out a lot more than I want it to so I'm just going to grab the bottom here of this control handle and I'm just going to swing it around a little bit. And as I'm swinging it around I'm just going to draw out that control handle so that it sort of gives a little bit of curve to the bottom of my stocking. And that's looking pretty good. I might just bring this point up a little bit more. And I can make my toe a little bit more rounder here. And you can play with these control handles and make this totally your own. However fat or skinny you want the foot of your stocking to be. You can move these points and control handles anywhere you want. Now I'm just going to smooth this. I can swing this control handle by the top and that's just going to give me a little bit of an arc there. And that looks pretty good. So let's color our stocking in in red. And that looks good, but maybe it's just a little bit boring. So now I'm going to use the crop function in the modify panel to um, spruce up my stocking a little bit and look more like the one that I have that I finished over here. So let's talk about crop a little bit. If I wanted to create a cuff at the top of this stocking I can go ahead and grab um, a rounded rectangle or something And I could fill that in with white. And that might be perfectly fine to use for the cuff of my stocking. We could convert that to path. But I want something that's going to fit a little bit more exact. And so here's where the crop function is going to come in. I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to kind of imagine where my cuff is going to be on my stocking. And I'm just going to sort of drag it down over the top. Now what crop does is it removes everything that's outside where those two shapes overlap. So what it's going to do is it's going to remove all this excess white space around where I have outlined um, where the cuff is going to be and it's also going to remove the bottom part of my stocking because that's outside of that overlapping part. But we're going to take care of that also. So what I want to do is I'm going to open up my modify panel 
and you can see all my different modify options. Here's the crop function. And what I want to do is in order to preserve my stocking, I'm going to make a second copy of it. And I'm going to make a second copy of it right over the top of the first. And so I'm going to go control C, control F, and that's going to give me that second copy right on top. So you can see that I have that second copy. Let's undo that. I'm going to select my copy and I'm going to select my rectangle because I want to crop this. And you can see now that kind of highlights and you can see where this area is right here that I'm going to have cropped and I'm going to hit crop. And now that's selected still. I could click off of that, but I could also just select it and change it to white. And now I have that perfect cuff for the top of my stocking. Let's undo that. Let's take that a little step further. I want it to kind of hang off the side a little bit. I opened my offset panel, which is down here with the star with the offset. I'm going to offset that by 0.125. And while that is still selected, I'm going to click my original. I'm going to hold down my shift key. And now they're both selected and I'm going to hit weld. And now I have a little bit of an overhang on my stocking. And um, this, this cuff that's the same shaped top as um, the stocking is. Now let's take this a step further. Let's grab a circle and hold down our shift key to make that perfect circle. And just sort of drag it over our heel. And we can kind of imagine where that overlapping area is going to be here. And let's do one for our toe. So we're going to hold down our Alt key option on a Mac. And we're going to drag it over the toe so that we can make a, a toe for our stocking that's in a different color. And now you can see that you're going to have this place where this is the, this part of the stocking is outside of the overlapping area. And this white space is outside of the overlapping area. This white space is outside of the overlapping area. But we want to preserve our stocking. So I'm going to make a copy of that over the top again. Control C, Control F. And I'm going to, now while this is selected, I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab my circle, grab my other circle, and crop. And now that crops those two um, circle areas to my stocking. And you can kind of see the line right in here. Those are actually just two little new shapes that were created with the cropping. And I can go ahead, hold down my shift key, and let's change them to white so we can see them on top of our stocking. And you have this perfect little um, four piece cut file that you created that you can use on your projects. You could use this on a card. You could use this for a tag. I talk about tags a lot because I love making tags. But wasn't that fun? And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is one of the things I love about Silhouette Studio because you can bring your ideas to the table and you can use these tools to create the things that you want. So if you finish this video, give yourself a star. I'm going to go over to the Flexi Shapes panel and I'm going to make myself a star, convert it to path, and I don't know, use your favorite color or your favorite Christmas color. You're going to cut this out of whatever 
you want I think it would be fun to make this star out of some really pretty gold sparkly or or silver sparkly cardstock. What do you think? But if you do make something like that, um, go ahead and join my Facebook group if you're not already there and share your creation there with the rest of the group. I'll leave a link to that Facebook group in the description box down below. If you have any questions or comments, I hope that you'll drop them down in the comments section below. If you like this tutorial, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that I know you're out there and that you'd like to see more tutorials of this type. I always love seeing your questions and your comments. It really helps me to grow as a creator. And as always, thanks for stopping by, say it with simplicity, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.